every time I would get into a situation where I couldn't control something, where I couldn't control the outcome, or I didn't like the outcome, hate and guilt would show up, come to the surface, ruin the mastery of the moment, keeping me from being the best version of myself at all times. I was in a place where I wanted help. I didn't like where I was at. I kept ending up mentally and emotionally in the same spot over and over and over, not only on a major league baseball field, but off the field in the game of life, which is so much more important. Everybody, please welcome Todd, Todd needs to do more in life. Oh my God, come on, man. Hey, can we, Derek, can <laughs> right. we pull him on the screen too? Todd, yeah, I can't man, wait how are can't you? Wait Good to this. see you here. I'm great, man. Trev, how are you? I got to tell you, I got you about strike two right now on, you know, when you were uh, pronouncing names. So I feel so honored and humbled <laughs> that you pronounced my name right. So. I know, huh? <laughs> Listen, man, I'm the worst show host ever. But I don't no, know. you're a good like, show host, but it. you just can't. You can't pronounce it, baby. I just can't. And no, I don't you can't even get like, it. I don't try. Well, actually, I do try because I, I did. But behind the scenes, I was asking uh, Dr. Jeremy his last name, right? I was asking him. I'll try. It mm -hmm. started with Lauren Hewlin, you remember? Yeah, I said mm -hmm. Hullin. You said Hullin. I said Hullin. Anyways, <laughs> we, we digress. But Todd, man, I'm so so grateful uh, uh, to have you now in the inner circle and to, to have you here with us. Uh, it was because of Danelle Delgado, uh, who is just so inspirational, uh, that connected the dots between me and you. And uh, it's all about networking. So I'm so grateful you're here. And I want to dive into your story. Uh, before we do that, though, can you tell the audience something uh, either personal or professional that they don't already know about you? Yeah, so, you know, I, I'll actually take it back to 1993. And, and uh, you know, in your introduction, it's world champion, it's this, it's that, and it all sounds great. And it kind of reminds me of 1993. Because in 1993, um, you know, after living out my childhood dream where I grew up in Yankee Stadium, my father, Mel Stottlemyre, was a legendary pitcher for the Yankees. And 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 growing oh. up in that atmosphere and that environment with Mickey Mantle, Thurman Munson, Bobby Mercer, all these greats. And, yeah. and, you know, we began to dream. And then to live out that dream. And then after the 1993 World Series where we'd just been declared world champions for the second time in the second consecutive year, if you'd have looked at me from the outside world, you're like guy in his 20s, lived out his childhood dream, making millions of dollars and now a two time world champion. You would say like, wow, like this guy has got it all. There was a problem. There was an issue. And that issue and that problem was that when I looked into the mirror, I hated the person looking back at me. Mm. Matter of fact, I despised the guy. Oh, wow. And even though I look great from the outside, on the inside, I was living, I was very broken. I was dark. I was living a life of unforgiveness. I was living a life of, I was living a life of hate and guilt because 12 years prior to that moment, um, my little brother, I was 15, he was 11. He was on his third bout of leukemia. The doctor said his only chance for long-term survival was a bone marrow transplant. Uh -huh. I was the perfect match. I gave him the bone marrow transplant. My marrow eventually put him into a coma that took his life. Oh, man. Obviously, oh, it was tragic for our family and for my mother and father to have to bury their 11-year-old son. For me, at that very moment, I hated the world. I hated God for taking my little brother away from me. Mm -hmm. Like, I was hateful on top of sadness. But there was something else that just, like, just really took over me. And that was, I was, I felt guilty. I was like, it was my marrow. And as a 15-year-old boy, even though doctors and my parents were saying, listen, it wasn't your fault. It doesn't matter what you told me. It's what I was emotionally feeling, and it's what I thought. If it wasn't my Merrill, maybe he'd still be living today. For, for more than a decade, I lived that life. I rewrote that story mentally and emotionally inside of me over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And what would happen? Every time I would get into a situation where I couldn't control something, where I couldn't control it, where I couldn't control the outcome, or I didn't like the outcome, hate and guilt would show up, come to the surface, ruin the mastery of the moment, keeping me from being the best version of myself at all times. Wow. And I would just tell you guys that 
I was in a place where I wanted help. I didn't like where I was at. I kept ending up mentally and emotionally in the same spot over and over and over, not only on a major league baseball field, but off the field in the game of life, which is so much more important. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to help. I, I, I called a, a guru. He was the mindset coach of major league baseball. And I said, man, I need help. And he said, I see that. And and we got together and it was supposed to be a two hour meeting. It lasted 12 hours. Uh -huh. And in the, in, in, in the first hour, he asked me the question. Here's the question he asked me. He said, Todd, would you do it again? And I said, do what? And he said, would you give that bone marrow transplant to your little brother again? And I broke like a baby. And I said, man, I do it every minute, every hour, every day. And he got right in my face, looked deep into my eyes as if he was, as if he was looking into my soul. And here's what he said, didn't you already do that? I said, yeah. He said, did you do everything you could do? I said, yeah. He said, Todd, it's time to forgive yourself. You're not God. You could not save him and you did not kill him. You need to let it go. It was the first time in my life someone put me in the gave me the right perspective. And it was at a time where I wanted the help. And, and he gave me permission to let it go. Now it was a process, guys, um, to rewiring this whole thing. And then here's what he said in the last hour of this meeting. It was supposed to be a two-hour meeting, lasted 12 hours. Here's what he said. Will you do a seven-day challenge with me? I said, I'm in. He said, here, here, here it is. He says, for the next seven days, you're not allowed to respond or react to anything that triggers you mentally or emotionally. You are not allowed to respond or to react. He says, the only thing you can do is document. I said, I'm in. For the next seven days, and at the end of the seven days, I called Harvey Dorfman, my guru, my mindset coach. I called him, and I said, I'm, I'm finishing it. And then we started going through the notes, and here's what he did. He built me a toolbox, a tool chest to help me not only get into peak performance, not only to get into a state of love, of joy, of peace, of happiness, but he helped me when I was in a, when I was in a state, a mental state or emotional state of hate and guilt and unforgiveness, he gave me the tools to come out of that state and move into a beautiful state. He gave me the opportunity to not only get into peak performance, but to be able to stay there. So my message today is this, if you're in a dark place, and maybe you're looking at some a bottle of pills on the on next to your bed and you're thinking that's your way out or maybe you're tasting the barrel of a gun and the metal of a gun you think this is my way out and maybe you've gotten to a place I, I just want you to know i've been there i've been on my back i lived in a dark place i lived in a place of hate i lived in a place of guilt i lived in a place of unforgiveness i want you to know today in my messages there's a better way and you too can do it Man, yep. throw that mic. Man. Get that mic in there. Woo! Yep. Ooh, I threw That's my a phone. Definitely mic drop. Yeah, throw your phone, Bob. Yeah. Come on, and, now. And you know no. what I, I find is is very, very recurring, right? You talk to and you look at, and I, I've talked to some other people that have reached their super high peak, right, of success. And, you know, there are a lot of people that they, when they get to that point, they've sacrificed so much or they've gone through so much. And to hear you tell that, man, I got like shivers. Well, <laughs> I know that well, was. That I, was I, I, threw that mic, I threw that mic earlier because the gentleman that got in your face and got real close and he told you the truth. Yeah. And he said it in a way that, you know, was empathetic, but also connected the message. And that's hard to do. It's hard to do to, to be direct, but also empathetic. And connect that message in a way that, you know, is direct and forward and uh -huh. like, hey, like shakes them up. Like he rattled you up. And that yeah. was really good to hear, Todd, for job seekers. We have a tendency in the United States. We lose our job. Now, here recently, most people lost their job through no fault of their own. But it still makes us feel like, oh, rejection and that kind of stuff, you know. But I'm glad what you said because it relates to job seekers. I talk to job seekers every week, hundreds of them. The other thing that I, I really got to, Todd, uh, before you go on, because we'd love to hear more, is that you were open, you were receptive. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and that's part, you said God, right? It's part God. You have to be, yeah, you you, be, you have to to be receptive to the message yep. and to, to him, to the calling, um, to the help. And that's why this is such a ministry for us is because a lot of times exactly the job seekers, there are 
they are kind of at that bottom. And, when and they it comes are, to brokenness. They are right? uh, a lot more receptive and, and willing to listen and, and, you know, open to it. So I like this ministry be because Trevor, Mark, and I constantly give positive feedback. And people in this, well, I haven't had one person, and I've been doing this 20 years. <laughs> I hadn't had one person that didn't land a job. And when they land a job, they understand yep. why they needed to hear the things. They're just like what you just said, Todd. 100%. Hey, hey Todd, um, I heard you in an interview. You talked about the multivitamin to success. So I'm really curious about this multivitamin, man. I want some. I need some. So the multivitamin to success is you have to push yourself to failure on a daily basis. And, and so many people look at the end result. So many people look at someone maybe achieving these massive results, or maybe sometimes, you know, you're looking at it and you say, well, where'd this person come from? Must have been an overnight success. Um, what, what most of the time, what we miss out on is all the failures along the way, you know, and, and I would just tell you, I'm a, I'm a product of screwing up. I'm a product <laughs> of failure. Let me raise I'm my hand. I'm a product of brokenness. <laughs> And, and because of that, and because of working my way through, you know, my mess and my message becomes my ministry. And here's what I would tell you. If you're not failing, then you don't even know what success looks like. Whew. And oh, I would tell oh. you that on a daily oh. basis, oh. on a oh. daily basis, you have to push yourself to a level that you fail. And you have to know. And look, here's the thing. You have to be okay with it. See, because I believe that the, your failures become your greatest coaches and teachers of what you need to do in order to approve, in, improve so you can achieve the success that you were designed to actually even live. Yes. That you were designed Woo. for. That's right. You were designed for. I love that. If you're not failing, you don't even know what success is. Yeah, that's, you don't even know. Yeah, that's huge. You know, I mean. You know, guys, so many people, so many people are afraid to fail, not because of failure itself. The, re the reason most people are afraid to fail is how they're going to look to the other people in their inner circle. Right. It's not, it's not even the event or the You're failure right, itself. That, that's not the biggest driver. The biggest driver is if I go out and I put myself out there and I go do this, the problem is how they're going to look to other people. They're so worried about how we're going to look to other people. And I tell people all the time, hey, listen, people actually don't care that much about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's yeah. so true. That, I love true. that you said that. And, and I love um, Danelle Delgado puts it best like this. She says, um, who loses if I don't win? Right? So think mm. about that. If you're not successful, if you, like for the job seeker right now, if you don't get back to work, if you don't succeed, if you don't crush this job search game right now and, and, and push the fear aside and, and push forward and, and lean in, who loses? Is it your family, your spouse, your kids? Who loses if you don't win? You have to win right now. You have to. Well, yeah. check this out, guys. Our definition of losing ain't God's. He teaches us through a brain aneurysm. Changed my whole life. And I started going out and finally serving like I was my dad told me to. And now I'm trying I'm getting a chance to 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 get in people's lives and, and ride with them in the car. Yeah, can can amen. you talk to us a little bit about how grit, right? How because like you said, if I don't win or if I don't win, who loses, yeah, right? Who loses That's if I don't said. win? But it's that points to um, just grit, right? sticking with it in because it's winning the battle right winning the war not the battle right so you can lose you can have these failures but ultimately you got to press on and win can you talk to us about how you've done that what you would talk to our audience about well in 1989 you know i got sent back down to the minor leagues um second time oh second yeah i remember that year. and you know i was with the blue jays and they sent me back down to triple a baseball with the syracuse chiefs and and i gotta tell you i was so i was so frustrated i was so upset and, you know, and I was, you know, 22, 23 years old. And I, I started playing victim. I started pointing the finger of why I was being sent down instead of taking responsibility for my own actions and lack of performance. Uh -huh. I began to blame other people. 
But then in this vulnerability, you know, I remember I reached out to my father and he was a pitching coach for the New York Mets at the time. And I was telling him and telling him and, and he was listening. And at the end of me talking and playing victim and acting like a spoiled brat, here's what my <laughs> father said. He goes, I'd love to have you as a starting pitcher here in New York. And I'm kind of like, yes. And then he says, but not the way you're pitching today, Todd. Uh oh. He says, you're so much better than how you're performing. I'm like, hey, dad, is mom around? By the way, because I'm looking for, I wanted you want support. support me. Yeah. I wanted people to support my misery, yeah. right? And, and my father was telling me the truth. Now, on my drive from Toronto, after this phone call, on my drive from Toronto to Syracuse, New York, I gotta tell you, I can't even explain how close I was to walking away from the game. Matter of fact, there was many times I started the question, and here's what I started to think. I had a world of people, and I had the baseball world telling me I wasn't like my father, and what am I going to do when it doesn't work out? And for the first time in my life, I started to lean towards the opinion of the world, someone mm. else. And instead of leaning into my dream, and instead of say, hey, I got to focus, I got to get better, I got to work on my skills. I started to lean the other way. I started to become vulnerable. My mind, my heart, my dream started to become broken down. I remember when I pulled into MacArthur Stadium six hours later, the sun was coming up and I pulled into a stadium, a parking lot that was empty. I had nowhere to go. And, and I kind of leaned back. And as the sun came up, I just remember leaning my seat forward saying, you know what? I'm just going to go all in. And here's what I'm going to do. If I fail, I'll fail in front of the world. That'll be okay. If uh -huh. I win, the world is going to have to watch me win. And I just went, literally, I went all in. But here's what's really important at this very moment. I couldn't see 30 days from that moment. And 30 days later, I got called back to Major League Baseball. I went on to play 15 years. I landed on three world championship teams. I played with Hall of Fame teammates. I Ooh. got overpaid by the tens of millions of dollars. That's not even important. That's true. Here's what's important. If I wouldn't have continued, if I wouldn't have taken the next step, here's what I would tell you is I would have lost out on the belief that it was possible. And by the way, what message could I share with you today without me having to fail my face off to get to a point of being vulnerable, getting to the place where I was almost so close to walking away? Here's my message. The moment you feel like that's it, I can't go and I can't take another step. Mm -hmm. I can't get past this wall and beat my head against the wall. Maybe, and, and you get to a mindset where you start thinking, Maybe, just maybe this wasn't meant for me. Maybe the world's right. Maybe the opinions of other people right. Here's what I would tell you. When you get to that point, generally speaking, you're as, you're as close to your goal as you've ever been. You're mm. just not aware. Okay. Woo! Okay. Fine. Okay. Let me get that. Let me yeah. Throw, hold on. Let me throw this. Crack yeah. Jack. Hold on. You five. Ooh, that's a big You five, <laughs> sixes, you sevens. Right, you eights out there in the audience. Are you a ten now? I hope so. You are. You are. Now this, close this has got to be. This got to be lifting you guys up. My yeah. goodness. Let me let me say one more thing. I, I don't mean to interrupt. No, you keep. No, come on, come on, come on, come on, Todd. People, you the listen, pitcher, baby. For the job seekers, the people on their back, going through the frustration, going through this whole thing, looking at COVID and saying it's COVID's problem, looking at politics and it's a political problem, looking at race, saying it's a race problem. For all of the people pointing the finger, I just want you to listen. I've been there. I'm normal. I'm human. I failed my face off. Yeah. But listen, I'm, here's what's so cool. It doesn't matter where you are if you know where you're going. Okay. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Anyway. It Golden doesn't money. matter where you are, as long as you'll sell out to a vision and a place where you can go. And as you're work, now you're just on a journey. It's a journey. It's a work of progress. The setback is now, and the failure is now, is for you. It's for you to get better in order for you to live and carry out and move on towards your vision. Mm. Right. So yeah. all of these setbacks are not a bad thing now. Now they become... Listen, how about when failure and setbacks becomes exciting? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 I get a chance to get better today. Let's fall right. on our faces today. Look, 
This is a Golden Mike episode. I'm throwing it out. I'm dubbing this the that's, Golden Mike. That's you the get safe this Golden Mike. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is that's, it, man. That's I, the non-confetti uh, okay. Golden Mike. But, see, I already know this. And let me tell you why I know this. Because like minds attract like minds. And so, that's Del true. Delgado was a Golden Mike episode. She came in here. She lit me up. She lit She it connected up. Yeah. me to you. Because she knew. She said Todd Stoudemire. She said Todd Stoudemire. Mm-hmm. Right, he he's the man. He's gonna he's gonna add some more fire. So Todd, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Uh, maybe we'll connect offline, but I want to know who you know. It's all about networking that can light this show up for our audience because you are just killing it, man. I love that. So I know yeah, you know some folks. Yeah, you killed it, Todd. I know yes, you sir. know some folks. Yeah, and and what? I'm gonna tell you something about Danelle because she's the one that connected us real quick. So she's gone through a situation over the last 48 hours, and and she's great, by the way. But in and, it, and, and she she let me. Um, we're close enough that she created this awareness for me to know, you know, what she would be walking through in her life over the next twenty four to forty eight hours. And I was like, wow, man. And I said to Danelle, I said, Danelle, I said, listen, I said, you're a champion. And and I was like, you know, and I and I kind of gave her a couple sentences, and she was like, hey, man, thanks so much. I needed that in this moment. And it's cool how you how you build these relationships. And then, and then if you really have a heart of service, you're always reaching out to see how the other person there is you doing. Go. There you go. Here's what's crazy. I, I, this morning, I just, I, I, it's funny, and I got goosebumps thinking about it because she's the one that connected me to the show. And I said, I said, hey, champ, how's your day? She said, how's my day? I said, my, she goes, my day is great. She goes, I put it in co- God's hand. Yes, sir. I put it in God's hand hands to take care of my problems i need to now shift my focus to go serve the world Ooh. i was like yeah oh that's Jeez. all kind yeah. of mics oh know, boy gosh, we gotta i said get danelle gave home. a mic drop over text oh. yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. Like, it was yes. awesome. well yeah. speaking of mic drops we've had a bunch you've got a golden mic here todd man i just gotta say thank you so much we are all appreciate yeah, todd. you yes sir you lit it up, bro. Just golden mics everywhere. So uh, you're welcome back anytime. And uh, Let's stay connected, guys. Yeah, yeah and man. we will Thanks stay connected. And I'm going to oh. lean on you because I know you you know some folks that yes, probably sure. could bring some fire on this show. Yeah. So I'm going to reach for out sure. to you, all right? Okay, that would be awesome. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston. And if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know.